Hello and welcome to Lovely English Stories. This story is written for Upper Intermediate to Advanced English Learners. Ready? Let's get started. B2C1 English Story The Curse The old grandfather clock chimes its last chime. The tick-tock stops. It happens every Friday evening. The world comes to an end, only to restart again the following day, when everything reverts to the way it was a week before. The same week is lived over and over by the family of Westmore Lodge. They are stuck in a perpetual cycle, never to escape. They don't realise they're in the same cycle. At the end of every week, not only does time reset, but so does their memory. They wake up on Saturday morning as though it is a new day, as though this day has not already happened a hundred times. The Westmore family have lived at the lodge for the last five hundred years. They started off as farmers, and as their estate grew, so did their wealth. Their beautiful home held a plethora of secrets. Westmore Lodge had a somewhat strange feel about it. There was something that visitors couldn't quite put their finger on. Many said it was an unnerving place. Some said it was menacing. A few said it was outright odd. The family had seen and heard many peculiar things in and around the house over the years, from ghosts, music, tapping noises, and furniture moving, seemingly, by itself. Jessie, the family's youngest daughter, had previously professed to regularly playing with a young girl called Elizabeth. The family had never seen nor heard of an Elizabeth, and no girls of the same name went to their daughter's school. It turned out she had either been playing with an imaginary friend or a ghost. Although there were strange comings and goings at the house, the family never felt frightened. In fact, they were strangely comforted in the knowledge that they weren't alone. When doors slammed and cups fell off the countertop, they knew it was someone trying to send them a message. They would laugh when their guests screamed and refused to come back to visit them. You'd often hear them saying, Don't be daft! They won't hurt you! The only issue was that they didn't know the house was cursed. When the builder of the house made the finishing touches to his new home hundreds of years ago, he met a woman. Little did he know that she had powers beyond his wildest dreams. She loved him and decided to devote her life to him. She gave him everything she could. All she wanted was to see him thrive and be happy. That was until she caught him with his neighbour's wife. The woman was devastated, but more so she was furious. As Shakespeare once said, Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. And this woman was definitely scorned. She knew she should only use her powers for good, but her heart was so broken, she didn't know if she would ever recover from the pain he had caused her. She thought hard about what she could do to get back at him, and realised that his pride and joy was his beautiful home. So, she put a curse on it, that if anyone ever cheated on someone in the house again, she would ensure they lived on a loop, never to progress, move forward or experience new things. The powerful woman did this because she expected the man to cheat again, but he didn't, and generation after generation, 
every couple remained faithful to each other until two years ago. Since then, the Westmore family had been living the same week over and over like a CD stuck in the player. The woman's curse had finally become a reality when the Westmore family's eldest daughter, Bella, decided to kiss her friend in the garden behind her boyfriend's back. Little did she know about the curse. Now she was doomed to live the same week repeatedly, until she learnt her lesson. The curse would break when she chose not to cheat, and she realised the error of her ways. So far, the family had lived the curse for two years, and Bella was still choosing to sneak off into the garden at her birthday party and kiss her secret crush behind the oak tree, she was only 17. Bella liked her boyfriend, but she had fancied her crush since she was 14. She thought he was the bee's knees. As they had their sneaky kiss behind the tree, her fate was sealed. She repeated the same mistake over 100 times until she finally realised what she was doing wrong. It was the hundredth time Bella had relived her birthday party. All her guests arrived bringing gifts, treats and drinks. The family had decorated the vast garden and fairy lights twinkled from the trees. Music was blasting out from large speakers as Bella's friends danced to the latest hits on the garden patio. It was then that she usually chose to sneak off and kiss Darren, her crush, behind the oak tree. They had been school friends for many years, and Bella had always fancied him. She didn't know he felt the same. She had a boyfriend and knew she shouldn't do anything, but she couldn't resist his charms. On this version of the evening, Bella was dancing, as usual, with her friends. Her boyfriend had gone inside to get some food and drinks. It was then that Darren came over and started flirting with her. This time, Bella had second thoughts. She wondered why he was suddenly so interested when he hadn't been for years. Was he doing this for a dare? She looked back at her boyfriend in the house and realised what a wonderful young man he was. He was loyal, kind and caring. He would never cheat on her. She looked back at Darren and could tell that he had had one too many beers. Suddenly, he looked quite pathetic to her. The guy she had fancied for years seemed like nothing more than a show-off, and he was looking for attention. She'd said she would go and talk to him by the tree, but as they walked over, she noticed he was stumbling all over the place. He was drunk. She asked what he wanted. He slurred and told her, I know you fancy me, Bella. Take your chance now. Give me a kiss. Bella was repulsed. What made him think she would be interested in someone who was in such a state? He lurched towards her and she pushed him back against the tree. I think it's time we called you a taxi and you went home. Whatever you think about me fancying you couldn't be further from the truth right now. You're so drunk. It's embarrassing. Bella walked away with her head held high. She called Darren a taxi and danced the night away with her friends and boyfriend. She didn't give him a second thought. She had a wonderful birthday bash. That night, Bella went to bed with a terrible headache and an immense feeling of deja vu. Everything felt so similar, and yet so different. She put the sense of unease down to dancing for too long and not drinking enough water. 
I just need a good kip, she whispered to herself. Bella did not sleep peacefully. She had nightmares. She dreamed she had the same birthday over and over again, and that she had kissed Darren many times. She woke up suddenly feeling sick to her core. Ugh, why did he do that? She said aloud. What a nightmare. Bella laid there for a moment, letting her brain process her bizarre dreams. She then got up out of bed, had a drink of water, and looked out of the window overlooking the garden. It was covered with chairs, plates, and empty wine glasses. The large oak tree caught her eye as the sun's rays shone directly on it. It looked almost like a mirage. She had never noticed how beautiful it was and how prominent it was in the garden. As she took in the tree's natural beauty, the feeling of deja vu hit Bella once more. Did last night actually happen? She was startled by her phone. She suddenly received some messages. She glanced down and saw, Thank goodness you sent Darren home last night. What a creep. With that, Bella laid back on her bed and chuckled as she responded to her friend. Thank goodness her nightmare wasn't the reality. This time... Little did Bella know that the curse was now finally broken. She was free to move on with her life and hopefully, subconsciously, learn from her mistakes. As the old grandfather clock chimed nine times and the second hand flickered around the clock's face, Bella made her way downstairs to start a new day and the first day of the rest of her life. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget, you can download the PDFs on our Patreon page. See you soon.